Hello, my name is Jamie Gillespie. I am your clinical simulation coordinator and I am here today to talk to you about the theoretical framework for our simulation. The overview for our presentation today, I will discuss the INA CSL standards of best practice, that is the International Nursing Association for Clinical Simulation and Learning. I will describe all 10 of the standards of practice as well as their purpose and I will suggest a theoretical framework to support design of our simulation program. I will describe the theory chosen, why it was chosen, and how this theory sets the foundation for simulation design, implementation, and evaluation. The goal of setting these standards is to ensure that our simulation program aligns with the ANA CSL standards. These standards provide quality assurance that our simulation program includes all the necessary elements to adequately, adequately substitute simulation scenarios in place of clinical hours with live patients. These standards are revised every three years and they set the standards that guideline the design, implementation, and evaluation of simulation-based learning. There are currently 10 standards of best practice for simulation. Professional development includes performing a needs assessment and gap analysis to ensure that our simulation is meeting the needs of our learners. The professional facilitator should pursue professional certification in simulation keep up to date with current evidence-based practice and reevaluate the program to make sure our educational needs are continuously met, as well as promoting quality improvement. Pre-briefing includes preparing the learner for the experience, usually um, within a week and then the day before. Um, this includes explaining the roles, the rules, expectations, and outcome of the simulation. The facilitator must consider the learner's skill level and decrease the cognitive load for the simulation. Design of the simulation, um, the needs assessment and gap analysis should be considered in the design. We must use measurable outcomes, consider the context of the scenario, using various types of fidelity um, for perceived reality, we must develop an evaluation plan and do a pilot test before the actual simulation. For facilitation, the facilitator must be skilled and match the learner's experience and competency. The facilitator should provide cues to assist the learner in achieving the outcomes, be aware of diversity and knowledgeable in the standards of practice, as well as maintaining a safe environment for mistakes to be made. Debriefing includes um, a plan to guide the learners towards the outcome, consists of performance feedback, knowledge exploration, and guided reflection while maintaining confidentiality and a safe environment. The purpose of the debriefing is to um, improve per future performance of the simulation. The operations of simulation include the infrastructure of the actual program. It's important to utilize our resources, um, such as personnel, the physical space, equipment, and finances required. We should create policies to support and grow the facilitation program. The simulation program. Outcomes and objectives should be measurable and in accordance to the curriculum and learner skill level. The simulation modalities and fidelity should meet the learning outcomes and guidelines established to meet these objectives. Professional integrity includes um, respecting equity, diversity, and inclusion among all members involved. We should uh, follow standards of practice, our code of ethics, maintaining that safe environment of learning and ability to make mistakes in that safe environment, as well as confidentiality for future learners. The simulation enhanced interprofessional education. Um, we should base our simulation off of the theoretical framework using best practices, recognizing our barriers and form the evaluation plan and shared objectives. Finally, the evaluation of learning and performance, it actually goes both ways. We need to determine a method of evaluation using standardized protocols and objective measures, um, closing the gaps in knowledge, progression towards outcomes, 
developing learner competencies, promoting patient safety, as well as the learners should also evaluate the simulation program, um, how much they learn, and what can be improved. The theoretical framework chosen for our simulation program is the adult learning theory. This was developed by Malcolm Shepard Knowles in 1980. He did revise it in 1984. His main philosophy is andragogy, <laughs> the art of silence of adult education. Um, main tenets include that adults need to know why they need to learn the material that they are learning. Adults learn through experience and use prior experiences in their learning. Adults want their learning to be relevant to their job and improve their job and for performance. Um, adults have an internal responsibility for learning um, versus external motivators. And adult learning is task or problem focused rather than content centered. And um, his term androg andragogy is um, contrary to pedagogy, which is how children learn. Knowles makes several assumptions about adult learners. Um, adult learners have a self-concept, um, are dependent on the self. Um, we learn from accumulation experience, more ready to learn. We are centeredness and problem focused in our learning and we're also motivated to learn internally um, because we know the reasons for why we are learning something. Um, we need to explain to our learners why they're being taught something. Memorization doesn't quite work with this theory. Um, the focus should be learning on completing the tasks that relate to job performance. Uh, always consider diversity and your learner's level of skill and competency. We should offer guidance and cues, but learning must be achieved through their own discovery and experience, including making mistakes. Adult learners should be involved in the planning and evaluation of their instructors and the program. Uh, again, they're very problem-centered um, rather than memorizing content. Um, we need to make sure that the simulation is relevant to their interests and what they need for their job performance or personal life. And um, any experience, including mistakes, is really the basis of the learning activity. Adult learners should be able to explore and build community to facilitate that learning. Games and humor are great to assist with this learning retention. Um, and then, of course, again, learning through mistakes in a safe environment where no patients can be harmed. So why did I choose adult learning theory versus other theoretical frameworks? First off, adult learning is the best framework for our program because we are all adults. We have all been in the specialty for quite a few years. We have a lot of experience, which can help build off of our existing knowledge. Um, we use our learned experiences and learning from mistakes to learn. Um, simulation is based on our real world situations and is directly applied to the tasks that's performed in our jobs. Adult learners, we understand the purpose of this education and um, how it improves our job performance. Our staff is ready and they're motivated to learn. Um, simulation is very problem-centered versus memorization of the concrete knowledge. And the debriefing portion helps improve design and development of future simulations for continuous quality improvement. The adult learning theory sets the framework for our design, implementation, and evaluation. As far as design goes, um, we want to use this theory to make sure that the best standards are being met, um, setting clear objectives. We're using our needs assessment to determine uh, um, the type of design and supporting our objectives. Our needs assessment and gap analysis are incredibly important for the simulation experience to make sure that we're meeting our learners' needs, making sure we have the correct equipment, forming new processes and standards of care, providing foundation for the experience and addressing a specific problem we're trying to solve. A good mix of low and high fidelity is good in 
any simulation program, uh, the higher the fidelity, the more realistic that the experience will be and more relatable to the job environment and the tasks. Um, the pre-briefing will make sure our adult learners know um, why the simulation is being done and why it pertains to their job. It also helps them prepare and know what to expect. As far as implementation goes, um, make sure to, to design adequate space, appropriate equipment, simulate a real work environment um, using standardized debriefing methodology. We're going to consider all of our students' learning levels and roles, um, facilitation and debriefing using that standardized framework just for objective measures. Um, the more the more real the simulation is, the more relevant it can be to the job and the role. Mistakes should always be used as an opportunity for growth and never taken negatively in this environment. And evaluation unit using the adult learning theory. Um, we should be collecting our data on the simulation experiences and the effectiveness. Um, we should use this to improve the quality over time. We need to evaluate not only evaluate the learner, but evaluate this facilitator, the experience, the facility, and the support staff, and the overall experience. Uh, we should involve adult learners in this planning as well. Um, it really helps with quality improvement in the long run and making sure that our program is continuously improving and getting better over time. Um, and we know that our adult feedback is very important for this. Um, we really want to know we really want to make sure we evaluate if our ANA CSL standards are being met, how the structure and process of the simulation affects the outcomes, um, making sure that the facilitators um, pilot the simulation experience, and what we need to prepare the students for. Thank you for listening to my um, talk today on my on my plan for improving our simulation experience does anybody have any questions i do have a list of, list of references thank you so much